Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction, Brian. And thank you all for coming this evening and inviting um, myself and, and my um, information about uh, memorials and prominent um, statues and so forth throughout the Gawler areas. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I'm not a historian, so a lot of the information that I will give you this evening is something that I have actually learned over the 40 years that I've been doing um, uh, memorials and, and so forth. So, um, so just take that into consideration when I do start talking about some of the history in, in Gawler. Um, most of the information that I've, um, I've got and gathered uh, has come from Brian's um, website, which is called Gawler Now and Then, um, when we talk about some of the prominent memorials throughout Gawler, uh, Williston Cemetery and St George's Cemetery. Um, you'll probably have seen that some of most of the information comes from, from that when we start talking about common memorials. Okay, so uh, we'll touch on some of the materials that are used throughout um, some of the countries, like the marbles and the granites. Um, we'll also touch on cleaning of, of memorials, um, erection of memorials, um, how they used to erect them and so forth. Um, before we started to um, have the help of cranes and, and trucks and so forth. Uh, lettering types and some stories of prominent people in the district. Okay? Uh, we'll touch on a few stories I've experienced. Uh, hopefully I won't bore you with any of those. Uh, I'll try and keep them as informative and interesting as possible. And I'll try to answer any questions that you have throughout the evening. Um, if you do have any questions, please free please feel free to uh, put your hand up and I'll, uh, I'll answer the questions if, if I can. And if I can't, well, I'll try and make it up. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, and then I'll finish with a small demonstration of, um, of some lead work. Now, when I say the lead work, most of the lead work nowadays is, is, is basically, we don't, we don't use it anymore. Um, apart from old memorials that come in for restoration. Um, so new memorials, uh, the style that I will use um, isn't used much anymore. So, but it is very interesting because it's prominent with some of the memorials that I will show you throughout the evening on the, on the, uh, on the screen and the photographs. Okay, so before we get started, um, I'll talk about garden memorials, which is myself. And, and my wife and my, my, my son. Um, so we, we, we operate a family memorial business here in Gawler and Salisbury. Um, so how does one get started in the industry? Um, you're probably thinking, how does one become a monumental mason or a letter cutter? Well, uh, I'll give you my, my touch on, on how we started. Um, first of all, I was um, 14, moving on 15. And um, I didn't like school much, so I wasn't very good at school. I mean, I, I really loved uh, some of the, um, the, the technical studies like woodwork and, and so forth, um, and metalwork and plastics in school. But, and mum and dad said, well, the only way you're going to leave school is if you, um, if you get an apprenticeship. Well, back in 1976, there was abundance of apprenticeships. My brother-in-law at the time, he was a, uh, a carpenter. I wanted to become a carpenter. So, so I tried getting into carpentry, couldn't, couldn't do that. So one day we opened up the paper, paper and there were apprentices, and he said, apprentice letter cutter. Does anyone know what a letter cutter is? Probably not, but it's a person who does all the lettering, uh, which I'll show you later. I had no idea that that's what I was applying for. So I applied for the job and I went into the city and um, this, the, um, the place was on the corner of Wakefield Street and Pulpney Street. So the site of that is, that is the site of my first um, job, or my first place where I worked. Believe it or not, um, the building isn't there anymore, but there is, um, what is it, that is Wakefield Street, that is the fire station, the new fire station. And on the other side is a, um, is a bank. Right where those cars are, where that car park used to be a building. And that's where I first started back in 1976. Okay, so 
I, I, I walked in there and I said I needed, a, you know, we, we were going to go for a job, apply for the job. And um, he said, thank you very much, I'll, I'll let you know. So I, uh, there was quite a number of guys, young lads going in and out. And um, I thought, oh, I won't get this. There was other guys going in there with rolled up sheets of paper with all their drawings and so forth. I walked in with just me. And um, so I, I didn't think much more of it. And then um, I heard the phone call. I heard the phone outside. Um, I was outside the backyard and said to my dad, I said, the phone. Can you hear the phone? And he said, yes. I said, I raced inside. And um, I picked up the phone. It was uh, the boss on the phone. And he said, you're lucky. It's your lucky day. This was the last time I was going to call you. This is the third phone call that I had. And it was the last time. And I said, do you want the job? And I said, you better do. So I got the job. I went down there and I got the job. And um, I had no idea what letter cutter was. So I, I um, first day I rocked up, there was a tradesman there. My tradesman's name, he was Helmut Schneider. It's a real German name, isn't it? And um, he said, uh, and who are you? I said, well, I'm the new apprentice. I said, what apprentice? He knew nothing about <laughs> it, absolutely nothing. He said, blow me down. The boss who I actually was interviewed by was Stan Tiller. Okay, everyone has known, known, known the, the Stan Tillots uh, and all the Tillot family of this world. Um, very prominent um, uh, monumental masons throughout South Australia. And um, I said, well, here I am, I'm, I'm, I need to learn. So basically he, he said, well, okay, well, we started on that. And um, so I went from there. And then I got another, I went out to, um, he, he left after about 12 months. And um, so I went to another place down at, um, uh, Boulderstone Road, Gips Cross, another letter cutter there. We, um, we were basically, he was teaching me as well. So I learned, I learned as I went. There was no trade school for, for letter cutters because the only thing I could have done would have gone to a sign writer's course. I learned layout, sign writing, painting and so forth. So everything was done hands on. So if you didn't have your, your tradesman there, you would just basically go and, and basically be thrown at the deep end and away you went. So that's how I learned and sometimes that's the best way to do it, you know. Throw at the deep end, you learn, you watch and away you go. And, and that's exactly how, and I'm still doing that today. Um, so so that's, that's how, how I started. Um, so that was my first, first place of, of job. Now, over the years I've worked for many other monumental masons. Um, Tillots were, were, the, were the most um, prominent um, masons that I worked for. Um, there was another firm called Nolte Memorials down in Dubby Park, which I've, I've worked for about seven or eight years. And over that, I was going to be about 22 at that stage when I first started at Nolte. And um, you work with many prominent monumental masons and letter cutters. And today I look back and you think, yes. Uh, I, there, there were these amazing uh, sculpturers, uh, letter cutters, but at the time when you're 22, you don't think about it. You're just taking it for granted. Everything you're learning, you're just taking it for granted. So we look back now and said, yes, they were prominent people that I, I worked with. So, so I, I think, and, 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 they, and they, you, you worked alongside them, and, and away you went, and, and you learned all their, all their trades, and, and they, they weren't, they weren't um, charging you for it. You just learned for it as you go. So, um, so that's, that's how, how I did that, and then after that, um, I'd, I'd work for other firms, the Tillots, the SD Tillots of this world, which is the, the big uh, company down there on West Terrace, um, opposite the West Terrace Cemetery. There's a um, um, SD Tillot. Now, the Tillot families, they, they, uh, the first, the father was Alan Stanley Tillot, was AS Tillot, which is where I, where I started here, and we will go to this photograph here. Now this memorial here is obviously of Alan Stanley Tillett. He's actually buried in Centennial Park. And it's just a, a simple headstone, Balmoral headstone with, with B cut lettering. And he he had he fathered two sons and he fathered um, Stan Tillett and Stanley Hainsworth Tillett. Hence you can see his wife uh, was Mahala. He'd married twice, Alan Stanley Tillett. He had 
Stanley from his first wife, and he had Steve, uh, Stephen from his second second wife. Okay, and then so after 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 that is we will go to the next photograph, and this is the the Tiller Memorial that's actually in West Terrace. Um, right opposite the SD Tillett um, factory. Um, as you walk into the, into, the, into the cemetery, you'll be greeted by this memorial here. Um, he, he died probably only about 10 or 15 years ago. And it was it's something that um, they had to fight tooth and nail to get this memorial in there. It is, it is a, uh, a beautiful memorial, but it has to be adhered to the, the rules and regulations of the cemetery. Okay, so once again, um, a very, very prominent memorial. And, and this will come out later when I show you other memorials. His father, well, his, his father was Alan Stanley. This is S.D. Tillett. And Stan Tillett, he passed away only a half a dozen years ago. And he's buried in Butte Cemetery. Um, now, I was, um, we went, I actually went to the, um, to that, um, that funeral up at Butte. Uh, me and another chap that um, some of the workers have worked for him over the years, we went up there and I was lucky enough to be a poor bearer to his, um, um, his funeral, which is I'm very proud of. He, he gave me my first job, so um, which is, um, I'm, I'm very proud of that and um, he's helped me out over the years and it's a great, great relationship we had. Even though, you know, we, we, we left, we came back, we left, we came back. Most of the letter cutters will, will work their way around the trade and, uh, and so forth. Okay, so Brian actually did actually say that you, you love a few stories. So I've just given you a major story there. Um, a few stories that we have along the way. I, I met a letter cutter, his name was Keith Livesey. He actually was an old letter cutter. Um, well, he was old to me. I was only 16 at the time, 15, 16. So he was in his 30s. He was old to me. Um, and he, he, was a, he was a letter cutter that, that um, would, would go into the cemetery. He was old school. So he would go into the cemetery and he would do, pick up a memorial or look at a memorial and say he needs to do an added wording to that, that, that memorial. He would do it by hand, chisel, upright. And I'm thinking, I was always taught to do something on the flat. So we, he was a, a contract letter cutter. We used to turn around and say, okay, we will help him out. We will pull the memorials out of the cemetery, put it into our, into our, um, uh, our factory and turn around and help him so he could do it flat. So blow me down if he doesn't. If we don't bring all these cemeteries, all these cemeteries, all these monuments back from the cemetery, and then what would he do? He, he would he would put it on a sack, stand it upright, and do it upright in the factory. Uh, so and he was always saying he he, he 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 would want to do it quicker and quicker because he, doing it upright was so much slower, and so he would always do, a hand, uh, do it upright. So, and that's how he was taught, and that's how he did it, and so forth. And he's, he, he made his living doing it that way, but he wasn't as quick as doing it on the flat. So, hence why, if we can, we will, we will do a, a memorial, we will try and pull a memorial down, and, and do it in, in our factory, rather than trying to do it upright in the cemetery. Okay? Um, there was one other, uh, one other story before we get going into the really good stuff. Um, my bosses, Stan Tillett, Mark Nolte, and so forth, were always, they always, uh, they started off their business by father down to son. I started off my business by myself, and now hopefully my son will take over in years to come. So they, they, weren't, they weren't the trades people. They, 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 they were handed it down from the father, and, and they, their, their workers were, were, were the people that did the work. Okay? So they weren't a letter cutter, they weren't fixers, they weren't whatever. So, but they always wanted to, to be and work in the factory. So when, when, when the time came, they said, oh, well, give me that and I'll have a go at it. You know, and, and they, they weren't the trades people. So well, one particular time, um, he wanted to, Mark Nolte wanted to, um, to use an angle grinder. And I knew over the years that this guy is pretty dangerous with an angle grinder. So, and, and, and it ended up he was dangerous with an angle grinder. He would then be working with an angle grinder, like it would be a piece of stone on the ground and it would have a cutting blade on it. And he would turn around and start cutting. And one particular time I was over on the other side of the factory and I was watching him, I said, 
his, this is a, an accident waiting to happen. And of course, an accident did happen. He was cutting and he was going backwards. And he stood on the cord as he went backwards. And of course, he stood on the cord. And what happened then? He dragged the angle grinder into his groin. Oh, no. And cut right through the jeans, right into his. And before you know it, it was a mess. So that was Mark Nolte's um, sort of like having a go at uh, trying to um, be a monumental mason. From that day on, his mother, his father had passed away early, so his mother said, out of the factory, let the guys do the work. <laughs> so that was that. I thought, well, um, yeah, you'll never do it again. And one other story is Stan Tillett. He taught us all how to load a truck. How to load a truck. Well, in my day, when I used to load a truck, this is how we used to do it. And he used to have apprentices, and I was one of the apprentices, and there was another couple of apprentices, fixers, and the people that were wrecking memorials, and he said, this is how you load a truck. Put a, put a, um, put a, a plank uh, up on the side of the truck, a big nine foot plank. Put a monument on the back on the back of it. Put a roller just underneath the, uh, where, the, where, the, where the plank hits the truck, and put a roller there. And you pick up this end and roll the headstone onto the truck. Once it's on there, then he would say, okay, this is what you do. You get a, you were supposed to get out a crowbar, a metal crowbar, but no. Oh, oh, this bit of timber over here will do, a bit of, a bit of timber about this long. He put it up under, this, under the edge of the headstone to try and pull the plank out. He put it up, he lifted the, the bit of headstone, went to put his hand underneath, guess what happened? This, this, this piece of timber went crack. Headstone came down, lost the top of his finger. Well, that's not how you bloody do it. <laughs> and, and before you know it, that, he, and, and he never ever tried to teach us how to load a truck again. So that was that. So look, there's many, many, many more stories. But um, after I, um, we, were, we were working down at, um, at uh, Boulderstone Jets Cross, I decided to open up a factory down at Waterloo Corner, uh, which we still have today. Um, that's where we do most of our work, our, our letter cutting, um, and so forth. We've opened up a salt. Uh, we've opened up a um, a um, uh, office here in Salisbury, and we've also opened up an office here in Gawler. So our next photo. That was the other side of the Tillot Memorial. So there's two sides to that tiller memorial. There's the back and that's the front. And um, so it's, it's, it's left for many other people to go, um, many other family members to go into that. It's like a vault. So underneath, underneath, that, that, um, underneath this granite here, this, this comes off and it's actually concreted vaults down. So you can have more people from their family to go in there. Okay. This is our, uh, our Gawler office here in um, Murray Street, not Murray Street, Adelaide Road. Adelaide Road, 60 Adelaide Road. We opened up that up about, uh, about 18 months ago. And our Gawler, our uh, Salisbury office, is down there in uh, Salisbury Plain, uh, just near Solver Paints so, or uh, anyone near Park Terrace. Okay, Stanbell Corner of Stanbell Road and so on. So we've been there for about three years. My wife, Cathy, she runs the Gawler office. And uh, so, actually, threw in at the deep end about 18, two, 18 months, two years ago. So, and she's, she's doing really well. Okay, so enough about Ghana memorials. We'll talk about um, some of the marble memorials throughout um, the Gore cemeteries, where it would be Williston and, um, and St. George's Cemetery. So we'll get to memorials. This is a memorial that's actually, believe it or not, it's in great condition. It's just got a little bit of staining through it. Okay? But, yeah, so uh, can't see now. Yeah, can't, read. <laughs> <laughs> can't read. You can leave that as one. Okay. Um, we'll talk about Carrara Marble. Carrara Marble is I would say the best marble in the world. Comes from uh, quarry in Carrara, in Italy, Tuscany, a region approximately 100 kilometers west of Florence. And most of the Carrara um, mar marble um, is used in ancient Rome, i.e. the Pantheon, the 
Trajan's column in Rome and so forth. Now, most of the Carrara marble that you will see throughout the cemeteries is made in Carrara. Most of those, those carvings that you will see in the, in the next photographs are all carved and made in Carrara in Italy. Um, not for the fact that we didn't have um, carvers and sculpturers here in, in, um, in South Australia. The fact is they had an abundance of them in, in, um, in Carrara in Italy. Um, they come straight out of the uh, out of Carrara, they, they, they come out of the mountains. There, there is mountains and mountains of Carrara marble that they take out and they come out in huge blocks, massive blocks. And what they do, they, um, they have families back in the 20s, 30s, 40s that were just, all they were doing was carving Carrara marble memorials. 